start with the first module. The first topic we're going to understand is the number line. Before going into the details of how to solve questions on the number line, we're going to try to understand the fundamentals by learning the types of numbers. The first type of number we're going to look at are natural numbers. Natural numbers are also called counting numbers. They are represented by the letter N, and they start with the number 1, 2, 3, and they move on to infinity. If you notice, natural numbers are mostly positive numbers. The second type of number we're going to look at are whole numbers. Whole numbers are exactly like natural numbers, except they start with the number 0. So whole numbers are represented by the letter W, and they start with 0, and the rest is exactly like natural numbers. The third type of number we're going to look at are integers. They are represented by the letter i or the letter z. Integers are of two types, negative integers and positive integers. Negative integers are minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and they move on to minus infinity. Positive integers are 1, 2, 3, and they move on to positive infinity. 0 is in the middle, and it's neither positive nor negative. But integers are mostly 0, 1, and they move on to positive infinity. These are integers. The next thing we're going to look at are rational and irrational numbers. Rational numbers are numbers that can be represented in a ratio or a fraction form. And irrational numbers are any kind of numbers that cannot be expressed in a fraction or a ratio form. Now, real numbers are just a combination of rational and irrational numbers. Now, the number line represents only real numbers. If you have noticed, I have represented the number line, and I have written only real numbers here. That means a number line can only accommodate rational and irrational numbers. Moving on to how the number line is represented. If you notice, 0 is in the middle. Towards the right-hand side, you have all positive integers. And towards the left hand side, you have all negative integers. When you're solving, you need to know that if you're moving along the number line towards the right hand side, you need to add. And if you're moving along the number line towards the left hand side, you need to subtract. Let's move on to understanding the rules required in order to solve the number line. <laughs> When we need to solve numbers on the number line, two numbers are given. For example, this says plus 5 and minus 5. Before understanding how to solve it on the number line, let's try to figure out the two rules. The first rule is that if both the numbers have the same sign, you must add. If both the numbers have opposite or different signs, you need to subtract. And then once you subtract or add the respective numbers, the number, the answer, or the numbers with the greater sign, it's the answer that precedes it. So now, for example, plus 5 and minus 5. Since they have opposite signs, you need to subtract according to the rule. When I subtract 5 and 5, I get a 0. In this case, 0 cannot have a sign, a positive or a negative sign preceding it. For example, if it was minus 3 and plus 2, it has the opposite signs, so I subtract. When I subtract 3 and 2, I get 1. The greater number is 3. The sign preceding the greater number is minus. Therefore, the answer also has minus. Now, let's try to understand how you solve it on the number line. Let's start with plus 5 and minus 5. Now, plus 5, I need to plot it on the graph, on the number line, sorry. Minus 5 is over here. As I said, when you're moving from one place to another, you need to understand what to do. So plus 5 is over here. They've asked you that it is minus 5, the next number. I said when you're moving left on the number line, you need to subtract. So I move 5 spaces left. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And this is where you end the answer. Now, if I move from this side and start from here, so I say minus 5. And the next thing says plus 5. When I have to add, I need to move right-hand side on the number line. So I move right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 you get the same answer irrespective of which number you start with. Let's try solving minus 3 and plus 2. Minus 3 is over here. Okay? 
minus 3 and plus 2. If I say it's plus 2, I need to go towards the right hand side because it says add. So when I go two spaces right, I end up at minus 1, which is the answer. Now if I start with plus 2, let's say for example, I start with plus 2. Plus 2, it says minus 3. That means I need to subtract three spaces on the number line. So I go 1, 2 and 3. I still end up at minus 1. So whichever number you start with on the number line, you'll end up at the same answer. We just need to understand that if I have to move right hand side, I need to add. And if I have to move left hand side along the number line, I need to subtract. Moving on to the second sum, this says plus 4 and plus 2. If you notice here, both the numbers have the same sign, so the rule says you need to add if both of them have the same sign. So since it's the same sign, directly you can write the answer as 6 and since both the signs have a positive number, the answer will also be preceded by a positive number. Now this is how you solve it without using the number line. If I had to use the number line, how I solve this, I start with plus 4. So I mark plus 4 on the number line and the next thing says plus 2. So if it is plus, I need to move right, right side along the number line. So I move towards the right. So I move two places and I reach 6. So plus 6 is my answer. You can verify by checking that the answer is the same. Now if I start with plus 2, for example, if I start with plus 2, and I need to move four spaces towards the right because it says plus four. So when I move four, so it'd be one, two, three, four, and I still reach plus six. This is how you solve if both the numbers have the same sign. <laughs>